and we have US new home sales coming out for the month of April. As you know, housing is always a big topic, no matter uh, what's going on, especially in the US. One of the biggest reasons is that when the housing market is strong, usually the whole economy is strong, when the housing market goes to shit, the whole economy goes to shit. That's how it's been historically. And uh, even during a recession during in, in 2000, we saw housing market very strong and because of that, re the recession after 9-11 was almost non-existent. Nobody even noticed it. it I mean, you know, other than the stocks falling, um, you know, everything was pretty much good. So the, the housing pulled the U.S. out. So what's been happening in the last year or so, in the last couple of years, is, as you know, U.S. has been raising interest rates and the interest rates have been high and because of that the housing market has declined significantly last time the housing market went to total crap was in the 1990 and uh, since then in the last 15 years or so in almost 20 years, 17 years this has been the worst times for housing. So we, we're seeing the worst housing times in the last 20 years almost. As you know, we have several different indicators coming out for housing. We have new home sales. We have existing home sales. We have building permits and um, housing starts. And today we have new home sales coming out. Now, existing home sales accounts for about 85% of the total housing market, okay? New home sales account for only a very small portion of 15%. But it's those 15% that actually can move the market a lot because it can predict turning points in the economy. You see, even though existing home sales cover such a large part of the economy, new home sales cover a smaller part of the economy, but it says a lot. When people are buying new homes, usually new homes are more expensive than existing homes. There's something to be said about consumer confidence. There's something to be said about their employment situation confidence and employment and it's there's something going to be said about people having money usually when the economy is not doing so well people are not making enough and they're not confident they wouldn't buy a new home they would actually go and buy existing home because it's cheaper when the new home is being bought a lot of new stuff goes into it so it supports durable goods and it supports um, buying for specific goods and services and in addition to that obviously as a new home needs to be constructed con con constructed, what happens is it provides a lot of jobs a lot of construction a lot of manufacturing support because obviously wood concrete and a lot of the other building materials are not worth importing so a lot of it is 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 done in the United States and the manufacturing sector is very heavily affected by the building sector. The interesting part about this report is it can come out and be total crap, not move the market at all, or it could come out and actually create a big move of 60-70 pips. The question is the big question is what what is everybody talking about right before this report what is everybody expecting the housing market to do in specifically new home sales obviously it also depends largely on the price of a currency but basically 
what's been happening is, well, to give you an idea, if, if everybody is very pessimistic about housing, and there's always talks how housing is really bad and it's expected to decline even more, and let's say we see a big deviation, even of 150,000, even a huge deviation, we may see a very, very muted move because, hey, everybody already thought that the housing is going to shit, so it went to shit a little bit more than everybody expected, so who cares, okay? So that, what, well, that's what may happen. What's been happening recently is there's been a lot of talk among economists, among government people, that the housing market is stabilizing, that it found its basically bottom and has been stabilizing. And that bottom about 850s, 850,000. And as you can see here, the, the, this report is expressed in thousands, which basically means how many thousands of houses were built in April, were, were bought for new homes. And, um, and I also I forgot to tell you, the reason new home sales is a little bit more important than existing home sales is it's actually a lot more timely. What actually happens with the new homes is that a sale is counted as soon as a purchasing contract is signed. With the existing home sale, a sale is counted when the property is actually closed. And some of you here who have bought a house before who are in real estate, you probably know that many times it takes 60 to 90 days or more to, for the closing to complete. So many times you have existing home sales actually coming out lagging two or three months. Those were the houses that were purchased three months ago or were signed three months ago and they just closed. New home sales is extremely recent. It's calculating the, the, the actual purchasing contracts and yes you could argue the fact that you know when a when purchasing contract is signed it's not a final sale but generally speaking 90 or 95 percent of the time people honor their purchasing contract and the housing does go through, clo uh, through escrow to close. So it's a much more timely indicator also. So we were talking about the current situation of this indicator and the fact that it's released in thousands. As you can see, it's expected that in, in the months of April there were 860,000 homes sold uh, versus months of March where we had 858,000 homes sold. New homes, that is. Um, basically, right now, everybody's talking about housing stabilizing, about it being stable, not coming out much higher or much lower. So I think this is a perfect timing for this indicator to move the market. I think people are looking at it and they're looking to see what's going to happen next. Is it really stabilizing? Is it improving or is it going worse? So my triggers are relatively, relatively uh, tight here. For the, for the regular triggers, as you know, normally we use triggers of about 150, not, less than, not much less than 100. But because of the timing here, I've used the trigger of plus 90 for a possible sell in GBPUSD. So if the number comes out of 950 or higher, it would be a 10 pips limit uh, for a possible sell in GBPUSD. If the number comes out deviating minus 70, and the actual reading is at 790. First of all, it's going to drop below the 800 psychological level. Second of all, 790 would be the lowest reading since the early 90s. And, um, you know, third of all, 70,000 is still a decent deviation from expectations. So, you know, that would be a possible buy on GBPUSD, and it helps the fact that GBPUSD is on a trend up and it's possible that it'll, it'll break the 9900s, it's possible. Um, but that's why I'm using 10 pips limit triggers here. Um, I'm basically also giving it a shot with a Wanda with 5 pip bounds. I'm going to give a shot GBP, USD and USD JPY on the Wanda using hyper click on the weapon, using 5 pip bounds on the, um, on the uh, regular 10 pips limit triggers.